Hey everyone, my name is Renz. This is going to be part one of advanced RAG techniques from pre-processing your documents so you could store that into a vector database in the most optimized way. I'm going to be sharing pretty much components of the Weeby advanced RAG techniques cheat sheet as well as how you can implement those for your crew AI agents. If that sounds interesting to you, let's go ahead and get started. So this first part is going to focus all about indexing optimization. We're going to use tools like Docling and then store the chunks generated into a Weeby database. We're going to show you guys how do you clean data, how do you keep the data that's relevant, and then actually how do you transform those into appropriate chunks. There's different chunking strategies that we could do, and then also like just kind of use cases, right? Do you need a chunk when it comes to handling an invoice? Probably not. But when you're trying to um, load a contract or a document that looks like this into a vector database, maybe it's best to use a, an appropriate chunking strategy to get that job done. So let's go ahead and get started with an example of how do you extract documents using Docling. And then based off the use case, let's see what details we can use to pass into a vector database. So here's how we could pre-process invoices, right? We have a bunch of invoices that look like this. It obviously has a clear structure has an invoice number, date of issue, the seller, client, and items that they bought, and overall summary of how much things were worth and sold for. So if we pip install Docling and then we make client, what we're able to do is use Docling's document converter, where we could take an invoice, right, and begin to extract details that we want, right? So once we've processed all the documents, we can see this is the converted Docling document. It has a bunch of details when it comes to identifying certain things on our PNG or on our PDF. But what's really important for us is, you know, being able to clean this data up so we could extract it into a structured output, right? And Docling gives you ways of being able to extract that. You could get certain tables, certain column headers, certain um, items or attributes or keys that list that live inside each um, that live inside each PDF. So item number, description, quantity, unit price, net worth, VAT, gross worth. These are attributes that we want, and obviously the text that's represented inside of them. Then once we've extracted that, we could get the high level details and end up having a structured output a invoice, a structured invoice like this. And if we go over here, we have this structured output, right? We have the invoice number, date of issue, the seller, um, client, name and address, right? So these are details that we can extract from, from this into something that we can use into our vector databases. Then if we view that structured output, we have something that looks like this. So then we could easily pipe that into a vector database. We're going to call it invoice test. And then from there, we could batch process and put all those invoices in. And then when we query, we could find the relevant details. So if we're trying to look for invoice 13194726, uh, we have the details for that. So I think this is invoice one. And we have the seller, Hopkins and Sons. And that's all the re relevant details from there. And then we can begin querying whatever we need from, from this point. So. Yeah, this is for invoices. Let's go ahead and do this exact pre-processing step before contracts. So the next thing that we need to chunk is contracts. So how do we do this? So the same steps, pip install Docling and we get client. We're going to use a document converter. And when we process the documents, we're not going to do export to dictionary. We're going to actually use the Docling document and use what they have here uh, a built-in chunker, so docking chunker, a hybrid chunker, which will do tokenization aware on refinements on top of the document layout chunking. So it uses the details defined by docking, like the sections, where things live, if it has tables, things of that. It takes the hierarchical context and just the way things are formatted and uses that context uh, into account of how it chunks particular uh, things. And what we get out of it is this structured output. We're going to be able to take things like metadata, the file name itself, 
what was the page numbers or the headings, how many of them were the chunk length in total, what was the chunk in particular to this file, and you know we're gonna set other things like the date and time. And what we're gonna end up with is this structured output. So if I were to query this and just do um, if i equals first index, let's print metadata and let's print enrich text. Let's flip that around. And what we're gonna see is something that looks like this, right? Oh, here it is. So if we look at the rich text, we get the text uh, of the section, and then we get the things that live in there. And then look at the metadata. If you look at the metadata, we have things like the file name, uh, what page was it on, the heading of this particular section. So when we query, we could do like, hey, what was the relevant sections or things related to you know, commercialization. And we could, you know, get sources for like, hey, it was in heading, exhibit 10.7, things of that nature, it was on page 21, and go from there, right? So we have a lot of details when it comes to knowing where things are. So when it's referenced back, once we find the most semantically similar uh, document or chunk, we have access to details like page number and section headings. And this is all you can do, like in just a couple lines of code, is being able to extract the certain um, details of where things live, right? So the same thing comes when we're trying to instantiate WeV8. We're going to load in WeV8, and then from there, our collection is going to be contract CB, and for every data row, right, we have the text, and then the, the particular metadata that are associated with that and we're gonna load that in directly into our vector database. And we have this with uh, total chunks of 34, process on that certain date, and yeah. So yeah, what we've covered is being able to pre-process these kinds of PDFs, right? We're going to take every single chunk like this from a hierarchical standpoint and have each Subsection, subsections kind of like associated with that with details like page number and section um, sections. So yeah, let's now kind of use these concepts that we've learned when it comes to just processing invoice, taking those structured data from an invoice and then using that as context or knowledge sources and as well as these pre-processing uh, sources as well for contracts and use that inside a crew. So how do we create a custom knowledge source with the chunking strategy that we defined earlier, right? We've defined this already as a chunking strategy. Let's now use that over here. So if we want to use a custom knowledge source, we need to extend base file knowledge source if it's requiring a file. If it's just text, we could do base knowledge source. And the, the methods that we need to include are load content and then add. Load content is just a way to structure for every file path. We need to attach a docling document with that. So we're using the doc converter over here and we're giving a data structure of the file name uh, as the key and the value being the docling document. Then this gets called on instantiation. So if you look at this and we see on init, we're going to you know, validate and load the content uh, on model post init. So once we've instantiated this, this class, the custom knowledge source, we're going to run load content without having to do anything. And then when a kickoff happens, we're going to be adding the docs, right? So we could remove this and what we need is to chunk content and then use the method save documents. This is already built in. It will have, based on what uh, storage vector database storage you've defined, it'll just save those chunks. So the important part here is get the chunks and just use self.save documents. So don't forget this command. And then if we go over to our chunk content, it's again, copy paste of what we've defined earlier. So 
this is something we've already went through. Uh, the only thing that's a bit different is you need to change the, the return type to a string because we're re requiring a return type for chunk content to be a list of strings over here. And then all we need to do is save this, define our custom knowledge storage, boom, that should be done. And then when we go to the crew and we're building out this crew, we're going to pass that knowledge, custom knowledge source into agents knowledge sources. So that's gonna take in a list, so we could have more knowledge sources over here, and then we could even have more file paths. So when we kick this off, this crew off, we're going to have a contract analysis agent, a task that will find um, the answer of the contract, but also cite the section and headings of where this answer is. So if we run play, what I've also done is I've inspected the agent, right? And what I've told it to do is to print, depending if we have knowledge sources, print the snippets of what this context is passing for us. So we have a visualization of what is actually being used as context for our agents, right? So this is underneath the hood is kind of doing a agentic rag, but the issue, what we were trying to solve for this video was being able to pre-process those documents to preload our agents with knowledge. And after a couple seconds, or what we're gonna have is this, boom. And here's our agent knowledge snippets, right? It's taking the context of, you know, what we're trying to look for. How does regulatory approval work for this company, Immune Therapeutics, right? So it's looking for regulatory filings, re regulatory approvals, and now let's actually see if that's you know in the right spot. So 4.1 on our document, boom, regulatory filings and regulatory approvals, really good. So uh, again, this is essentially the context that's being passed. So this is full transparency, this actually works, and we're actually passing in the right things. And boom, we're getting, the approvals based off section. So if we go to a section of 4.1.2, boom, pricing approvals, 4.1.2. And again, this is how, why good data in gives you good data out. And these are things that we need to use to give our agents relevant context to answer with the right and relevant details. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm going to post this on GitHub, so feel free to clone it, uh, leverage this custom knowledge source to begin extending your own knowledge sources. And that's a wrap. And that's a wrap. That's pretty much how do you do advanced RAG techniques using the tools leveraged from the Weaviate cheat sheet. We were able to pre-process things from invoices to contracts and then use those uh, chunking strategies to actually use those into a custom knowledge source that your agents within Crew AI can use. So if you guys have any questions, comments, or points of clarification that I can answer, leave a comment down below, but don't forget to like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this video. But yeah, that's it for me. Thanks guys. See you next time. Bye-bye.